Controlling Pain Naturally Through Hypnosis Created by James G. Springer, CHT, MNLP How to Powerfully, Naturally Control or Completely Eliminate Pain Through the Power and Science of the Subconscious Mind Before we start, I'll tell you a little bit about me, the author. My name is James G. Springer. And in the picture on the left, you'll notice that I didn't do the traditional suit and tie picture, but rather I decided to put a picture of me relaxing in my favorite place on Earth, Charlotte Amalie, St. Thomas, in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Qualifications-wise, I am a certified consulting hypnotist and a certified NLP master practitioner. I also have specialty certifications in hypnosis and pain control, hypnosis in sports and peak performance, hypnosis and weight loss, certified weight management specialist, and I am also a certified public speaker. So what is pain? In order to effectively manage, control, or eliminate pain, it is critical that we truly understand, number one, what pain is, number two, where pain actually occurs. The slide below demonstrates on an fMRI the brains of three amputees, Notice how the brain is lit up under differing circumstances. If you hit your finger with a hammer, you may think that your finger hurts, but it does not. Your finger is injured, but your finger does not experience pain. At the point of injury, the nerves fire and send a signal through your nervous system to the brain. The brain then interprets the signals as pain, and mentally, your finger hurts. Even though the sensation you feel seems to be in your finger, the pain actually is received, processed, interpreted, and reflected completely in your brain. Is pain a good thing or a bad thing? As human beings, we have a natural tendency to instantly and automatically think of pain as being a bad thing. However, some pain is, in fact, necessary. Imagine what could have happened if, when I hit my finger with the hammer, I did not feel the crushing pain of the hammer when it hit my finger. So some pain is indeed necessary, as in the case of physical injury. It's important to understand that while it may be necessary, even necessary pain can be effectively controlled without risking or contributing to further damage. Most pain, however, is not necessary. This type of pain known as chronic pain, can easily and typically almost effortlessly be controlled or eliminated and should be. So the question is, even if I can control or eliminate pain, should I? The first question that I ask a client who has requested that I eliminate or help them control pain is to find out whether or not the pain is necessary, understanding that sometimes pain does serve to protect us and to the extent that the elimination of pain will not result in furthering or worsening of the injury, the answer would automatically be absolutely and obviously yes. However, if there is a reason for the pain, then the answer would be no. And even when the answer is no, I won't eliminate the pain. I will always help the client control the pain. Distraction and reframing the key to effective pain control. When left to its own devices, your brain will automatically decide how to interpret pain signals. You may have been injured or even experienced chronic pain and then become distracted by something or someone and at some point realize that you weren't feeling any pain. Until, of course, the moment you realized you weren't feeling pain, your focus then returned to the experience and you instantly automatically return to the pain state. And what does neuroscience tell us about hypnosis and pain? For years, all hypnotherapists had to go on was experience and satisfied customers, but no science. However, the recent advent of the fMRI has allowed neuroscientists to demonstrate and more clearly see what hypnosis and pain's relationship truly is. 
The picture on the right demonstrates a human brain. On the lower left and upper left, you see a brain without hypnosis experiencing pain. The images on the lower right and upper right are the same stimulus, only the subject is under hypnosis. The top two images show the stimulus reception. So, as you can see, the brain is receiving the same stimuli in both cases, and the sensation is in no way blocked by hypnosis. However, you can also see that under hypnosis, even though the brain is receiving the exact same sensory input, the anterior cingulate goes from red to blue, indicating that it is not experiencing pain. The brain has simply chosen to interpret the input differently. And where in the brain do you experience pain? Contrary to what some believe, there is no one single pain center in the brain. Pain can be experienced in many parts of the brain based on the type of pain and its emotional intensity. Pain does activate the limbic system of your brain. The limbic is where your emotions and memories are stored. Pain can generate a powerful emotional response. The more emotionally charged, the more intense the pain. You may have heard someone say that they are suffering with pain or that they're burdened by a pain. Also, people tend to associate other sensory memories with pain, such as a sharp pain or searing pain, cutting pain. These are all generated by the limbic system. The place in the brain where this is most consistent is in the anterior cingulate gyrus, also called the anterior cingulate cortex and shortened to the ACC. In fact, many in the hypnosis community consider the ACC to be what is known as, in hypnotherapy terms, the critical factor, the gatekeeper to the subconscious mind. What types of pain respond to hypnosis? First, we'll discuss acute pain. There's dental pain. The experience of going to the dentist can generate a host of powerful negative associations as well as pain. Medical procedures. Once again, anxiety and fear are often associated with doctor visits, especially if we know we're going to experience something that may be somewhat painful. Medical emergencies. At some point in our lives, most all of us will experience a medical emergency, whether it's an accident or a physical ailment, and oftentimes they will be accompanied by acute pain. Virtually any other type of acute pain can also be quickly, easily reduced or eliminated through hypnosis. Additionally, many of the fears and anxieties and other negative experiences that accompany medical and dental procedures can also be eliminated through hypnosis. Next would be chronic pain. Chronic pain is a pain that has no medical reason for its existence, but is one of the most common and debilitating pains that people experience. Chronic pain is no less real than acute pain. It is generally the result of malformed or maladjusted memories. You may have experienced an emergency pain that your subconscious mind commits to memory. So much so that even after the injury is healed, the memories of the pain remain associated and continue to be experienced. Phantom pain would be an example of this form of pain. In phantom pain, a person who has had a body part removed, such as an arm or a leg, or even as simple as a tooth, can still experience pain in the missing part. Your brain has a virtual map of your entire body stored, therefore, you may continue to feel sensations of that body part, including pain. Hypnosis has shown remarkable efficacy in the treatment of chronic pain, as well as the emotional components that often accompany this type of pain. Third and finally is emotional pain. Emotional pain is an often overlooked form of pain that most all of us will suffer from time to time. The loss of a loved one, ending of a long-term relationship, loss of a family pet, or many other things. Also, many times physical illness such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, or any other chronic illness can create severe 
and intense emotional pain. Emotional pain is a very real form of actual pain and responds extremely well to hypnosis. Before we discuss what hypnosis actually is, we should first discuss what hypnosis is not. Let's address some of the common misconceptions regarding hypnosis. First and foremost, hypnosis is not mind control. The client under hypnosis is in complete control of your mind at all times. In fact, if you decided to, you could actually just simply open your eyes and come out of state. Hypnosis cannot make a person violate any core beliefs or values. You cannot coerce a person into becoming an assassin under hypnosis. You cannot be made to do anything you do not want to do under hypnosis. I've often been asked if I would make someone bark like a dog or cluck like a chicken while in hypnosis. And unless that person wants to bark like a dog or cluck like a chicken, I cannot possibly do that. You also cannot be made to divulge secrets you do not wish to have known under hypnosis. I cannot, while in hypnosis, ask you to give me your PIN number to your bank account. You can also not become stuck in hypnosis. There are only two natural conclusions to a hypnotic session. One is to wake up. The other is to go to sleep. Hypnosis is actually not sleep. You never lose consciousness while under hypnosis. You are in complete control of your mind and totally aware of everything that's going on around you. You are not more subject to demonic influences or possession under hypnosis. In fact, in my opinion, you are less likely to be influenced or possessed while under hypnosis because of the heightened state of mental awareness that you achieve during a hypnotic experience. Hypnosis is also completely safe. There is no record of any person ever being hospitalized or having to go to the doctor as a result of a hypnotic session. What is hypnosis? Hypnosis is a state of mental focus while in a deep state of physical and mental relaxation. It's an altered state of consciousness that involves the distraction or bypass of critical thought creating a state of reasonable suggestibility. A state of becoming deeply absorbed in an experience while continuing to narrow focus. And hypnosis is a completely natural state that everyone, yes everyone, automatically, instinctively experiences to some degree every single day. Hypnotic Pain Control Modalities There are a number of modalities at the hypnotist's disposal to effectively reduce or eliminate pain, all of which involve a degree of mental distraction. These are a few of my favorites, but there are many more. First, Favorite Place This can be initiated in a trance, or later outside of trance. The modality involves vivid visualization and the client is taken under hypnosis to a favorite place. Maybe a beach or the woods or a snow covered mountain, but a place where they are instructed to completely experience the place through all available representational systems, through their sight, smell, sense of taste, hearing, and touch. Once this has been done in trance, an anchor can easily be set so the client can access the state at any time. Secondly is glove anesthesia. This also is initiated in trance and anchored for later use. In this modality, the client is taken into a deep trance and guided through numbing one hand, typically through visualization, and then through suggestion can touch that hand to any part of the body immediately and completely numbing the area touched. Another, the third here, is the control room, also initiated in trance, but can also be very effectively initiated outside of trance as well. The client is guided visually into a place, a room full of control switches, dials, etc. The switcher dial for the affected area is located and simply dialed down until the pain has subsided. This modality can be very powerfully combined with the favorite place to work in dental and medical procedures. Number four, spinning. This also can be initiated in or out of trance. The client is instructed to locate the source of their pain in their body, associate a color and motion to the sensation. The client then physically withdraws the pain energy from their body and reorients its direction to reverse of its original direction, then accelerates that motion to the point it cannot stop. 
Once that is achieved, they then force the feeling back into their body. Generally, this will dramatically reduce or completely remove pain in less than five minutes. And then five, conversational distraction and dissociation out of trance. This is an amazingly powerful method of removing pain nearly instantly. The client is simply asked to rate their pain on a scale from one to 10. Once the number is selected, they are then asked why they did not rate the pain higher. By trying to justify their answer, they are forced to say something along the lines of, because it didn't hurt that bad. After they've justified in their own mind the number, they're again asked to rate the pain. In the vast majority of cases, the pain will have gone down. The process is repeated until the client rates the pain at zero. And as I said, this generally takes less than five minutes to achieve. And finally, hypnosis has been proven scientifically to be a very efficacious modality in controlling acute, chronic, and emotional pain. Hypnosis has been shown to reduce recovery times from surgery and injury. Hypnosis is a very affordable, non-addictive method for controlling and eliminating pain. And also, hypnosis has no downside risks, no side effects, and improves the overall quality of life for the client and facilitates a better doctor-patient relationship.